LD, WMMA, CD, your boy, the coach, your live, 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 on the cover show, the coach, show live. Okay, folks, so on the screen, you know, I have a Chanel diary. I did, did a couple of interviews with Chanel, and, you know, Chanel, good people, you know, that's my homie. Um, I want to talk to y'all because, you know, I started looking at the landscape of WMMA, and I'm talking about, not talking about men's MMA, I'm talking about WMMA. I start looking at the landscape of it, and folks, the only black champion in any organization that we've ever had was Angela Overkill Hill, the black black female champion, and she was the Invicta Strawweight champion. And I said, damn, Angela Overkill Hill was the Invicta Strawweight champion. I said, get the hell out of here, okay? But, and, and Invicta isn't like a major organization. It, it's not a major organization. It's a feeding ground for the other organization. So Invicta to me is a ground where you go and you you lay your foundation in Invicta, okay? You go to Invicta, you earn your stripes, and then you move on to the next level. To me, that's what I've always looked at Invicta as. But I'm talking about we've never had a black female champion in one of the major organizations. Okay, we hadn't had a black female champion in the UFC, in Bellator, the one championships, the PFL, and LFA. We, we've never had a black champion in any one of those organizations, a black female in any weight class and that's guys that's staggering but you have to understand why okay here's the first thing okay black females are not a fan and guys and I've, I've actually done the research I've asked black females are not a fan of close quarter contact because when I even talk to a black female girl you'll be a good wrestler and they're athletes you know like I ask athletes like basketball players or lacrosse players or you know people who uh basketball players, lacrosse players, soccer players, and the first thing that the sisters say that play these sports, mm, uh -uh. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want nobody all up on me. I don't want to be all up on nobody's sweat. I don't want to be smelling nobody that close. Like, black women are not fans of close quarter contact. It's just not. The majority, I'm not saying all, just the majority of black women, they're not fans of that. Just not. And, and, I, and I find that, like, shocking, like, just about every single, even sisters that box. Even sisters that box. A lot of them will say, I'm just not a fan of somebody all on top of me and wrestling. Like, guys, the, the sisters, they just don't like that. You know, for whatever apparent reason, you know. Um, also, too, a lot of people outside of our race, black, a lot of other races, they start MMA very, very young. But they also have access to it. They have access to MMA. I feel like, you know, in, in a black household, the median income in a black household overall is much lower than the median income of any other race and i and i found that staggering mma is a hella expensive sport it man it's expensive like really expensive and the bills and it just it just mount up because you got to pay your gym fees you got to pay your you got to pay your trainer you got to pay your manager if you have a manager okay sometimes you do have to pay your sparring partners and you know if both of y'all are trying to help each other out, you don't have to pay them. But um, sometimes you have to pay your sparring partners. Okay? I mean, you have to pay, like, your association fees. You got to pay for your license. You got to pay. It's just MMA is extremely expensive. Like, it, it's an expensive sport. And it's like every time you turn around, there's some kind of fee you got to pay. Then you got to pay for the travel because when you're up and coming, you know, sometimes you have to go to tournaments. Okay, you got to get, you know, specialized people to help you. You got to get somebody to help you with striking. That's a cost. You got to get somebody to help you with wrestling. That's a cost. You got to get somebody to help you with jiu-jitsu. That's a cost. And so some fighters are lucky to find gyms like that. But if you have all those different specialties in one gym, then the price of the gym is going to be inflated. So you're going to have to pay, you know, an ass load of money <laughs> to attend that gym. You don't have to attend. And then you have to work your way up to the ranks to, you know, be good enough to get the main people that run the gym that you work with you, which, you know, that's a hassle in itself. And then when you reach another level, and this, this is what I see in some gyms, then when you reach another level in that particular gym where, let's say you become an elite fighter, where well, you pay more. MMA is expensive. It, it's hard, like, for somebody that want to get their kid into it, you better be looking to budget. You better be looking to budget, you know, starting out as a kid, another $2,500 a month to do MMA. Like, I'm talking about really do it the way you're supposed to do it, not just a part of some teen club or a nickel and dime it. And, you know, most parents, black parents, 
they ain't finna spend no twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a month to do MMA when they can just sign them up for basketball, where you know they may pay like their traveling fee a hundred dollars a month versus you know twenty five hundred to three grand a month. A lot of parents ain't gonna do that. So overall, black women ain't gonna do it. And then also too, some people they get hooked up. Like you go into a gym, and if you if the gym really believes that you can be this great fighter, okay? They will, they'll train you. And you may not have the inflated gym fees, but they're gonna take a larger percentage of your purse. They're gonna take, when you start making money and generating income through your fighting career, they're gonna take a larger percentage of your purse. So, I mean, it's like you, you can't get away from the cost of MMA. It's too expensive. I even think between golf, well, golf is hell expensive. Um, my nephew was in the golf and he, um, you know, for his birthday, I said, I'll pay for a year of golf lessons. And when I really figured out, man, golf is expensive. No wonder a lot of brothers and sisters ain't really doing it, you know. Um, you know, and you're lucky if you find like a, a person that do like a golf program where inner city kids can get involved in it. But it's expensive, you know, to get the best coaches that teach it. Nah, I mean, you're going to pay. Now, my nephew only wanted to do it for five months. He got tired of it. And I'm glad because, man... Had it went a whole year, hey man, I'd have been paying so much money for that. You know, it, it just, it, it's insane, man. And I just, I never really thought, I never wanted to think that, you know, just a sport, learn teaching somebody was so much. It's crazy. But you you got so much stuff going on in MMA. You got, you know, striking coach. You got, you know, a coach that understands boxing, kickboxing. Like, you got to pay for all that. So black women and black families overall, they don't have the financial stability to support their kids up and coming in an MMA career. They don't. And in some places here in this city where I live at, there are a couple of MMA gyms that they they do support, you know, inner city kids. So kids can learn self-defense. But they're not set up. They're not set up to, you know, have you have a career. You know, a 10, 15 year career. They're not set up to actually evolve your skills. They're there to help you get the beginning lessons and help you understand, you know, what certain parts of it is. But they're not, they, they can't really evolve you as a fighter. So you have to go to the elite gyms and to the elite people that understand the fighting game, that understand, you know, what you got to do. You have to go there. You can't be a world class fighter and then you don't have world class trainers or world class, you know, mentality that can help you get to the next level. So that's the, the financial reason why we don't have a black champion. Okay, we just don't. Um, and it's, it's sad because you have a lot of athletic black women that can, you know, damn near realistic. Like, like to be honest, I wish Carissa Shields had started MMA early. I wish she'd have started, like, really early. Because had she have started early, like, maybe if Carissa would have started, you know, playing around MMA 10 years ago, Carissa Shields could be a world champion in MMA in one of the major organizations. But... Back then, it was it was boxing, and Carissa, you know, she grew up poor, so she wouldn't have had the means growing up to actually start fighting MMA. They didn't have that kind of money in their family, but Carissa, you know, got lucky, and a couple of coaches saw her potential, and they trained Carissa. They trained her, you know, all all even up through her pros. Carissa had the same coach, and then she dumped that coach and got John David Jackson. But I'm just I'm just saying that the opportunity for black women, period is very low and the access to gyms at an affordable price is low like if you're a black woman you have to have some money like you have to literally have some money and then you can't start too late because if you start too late in your 20s it's too late because see you'll be up against you know mostly all of your competitors been doing mma since they were teenagers you know and then you start as a 20 something year old adult and you finally making some money you can afford it it, it, it's, it's it's a little too late. Like, you have to start very, very young. And, you know, a lot of black women that get into MMA, you know, most of them, they start in their mid-20s. Like, they start like, between the ages of 26 to 28. The average black woman that does MMA, that's when they start. It's crazy. But it's not something that we grow up, and it's not something that we do. And I'm talking, you know, black people as a whole. You know, now a lot of black males have been champion. I'm not talking about black males. I'm talking about black females. Okay? I'm talking about black females. It is. Part of it financial and part of it is just, it's not appealing 
to the average black woman. It's not appealing. It's just something that black women just don't, you know, they're not like, ooh, okay, well, I want to roll around on a mat with somebody who's sweaty. And, you know, like people who do MMA and people who do jujitsu, look, <laughs> you roll with people all day long. Or when you're in that session, you do it all week long. And you begin to become immune to people's smell. Like when I first started, you know, rolling jujitsu, man, 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 some of the people in there with the worst body odor, you kind of, you like, damn, I don't want to roll with them. But then after a while, it just, <laughs> you get used to people's smells. You get used to their odors. You get used to it. Like, and it's kind of, it's a crazy thing to say, right? It's crazy. But to be honest, you get used to, you get used to the monotonous, you know, thing of MMA. You get used to it. Like now, you know, unless the person really, 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 really stink, like they don't use, they got poor hygiene, you don't really smell them anymore. Like, yeah, and I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, you don't smell them anymore. You don't, the smell is not like as intense as it was, like, say, on day one or week one. So, I mean, I don't know. You know, once you get past people's body odor, yeah, you, you're good to go. You got to get past it, though. Um, and MMA is very tough. MMA is very tough on the body. Um, you know, a lot of people, their bodies break down, and it's just MMA is not something that you can do for 30 years, okay? You can't do it for 30 years. It's just your body breaks down at a fast rate when you're a fighter because you're taking hits, you're taking punches, you're taking kicks. But I, I don't know. We need our first black champion. And I think this woman on the screen, Chanel Dyer, you know, definitely has the skill set to be a champion in a major organization. Not a feeding organization, a major organization. I think Chanel Dyer has that has that skill set. And she's getting better and better and better. Did you guys see her PFL fight? Her first fight, man, she dominated that girl. She beat that girl's ass. Um, and Chanel, I like Chanel because she is, she started, you know, MMA as, as a striker, you know, Muay Thai. Um, in kickboxing but Chanel does tournaments see here's another drawback that I say with a lot of people that's one dimensional the one dimensional people in the past they never ever the old school people they never want to sharpen their skill set they never want to like Ronda Rousey you know you would you would say hey if Ronda Rousey got into amateur boxing tournaments you know Ronda Rousey would, 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 would damn sure be a hell of a striker but Ronda Rousey didn't want the embarrassment of being Ronda Rousey and then somebody knocking you out in a boxing ring. She didn't want that embarrassment. Or, you know, Holly Holm. You know, I used to always say, if Holly Holm would go and do wrestling and jiu-jitsu tournaments, she'd be a much better wrestler. Now, she's a better wrestler than she is now. But think about it. If you were in these tournaments getting beat and, and getting your skill set sharpened, where would you be then? Moreover, where would you be? Where would you be? But Chanel is doing jiu-jitsu tournaments. She does them all the time. And that's how I know that you know, this is the mark of a champion. It's the mark of a champion. She's doing jujitsu tournaments. I mean, she's there all the time, and she's working hard every day trying to improve her rank in jujitsu. Um, and before long, you know, Chanel is going to be well rounded. Going to be well. Her takedown defense is incredible. It's through the roof. And you know, she patterns some of her game after Bojangle check. And you know, Bojangle check. I don't like Bojangle check, um, but I, I got to say, the woman has some of the best takedown defense in WMMA. And I gotta call a spade a spade, okay? The woman has some of the best takedown defense in WMMA, hands down, by far, okay? And you gonna watch some old Bojangle Check films when she was in her prime. Taking this woman down was like, it was it was almost impossible. But Chanel Dyer patterned some of her, her game at the Bojangle Check. So it j just is what it is. But hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe within this year, maybe within two years, we can have a black champion, okay? I really hope we can because, you know, the sport of MMA been going on for a long time, and women, it's been, for women, it's been damn near, what, getting close to two decades of females fighting in MMA and not a black champion in a, a major organization, okay? That's kind of, that's kind of heartening, it's disheartening to me. But maybe, maybe Chanel Dyer would be who will fulfill that destiny.